What is it deprived from, like and, originally? And, and the cappy vine, part of the vine, is also what's going but to But what is it like DMT? Where did, what's the well, most... The, it's what? extracted from, especially like the passion flower. It's um, extract, DMT yeah, extracted from the yes, passion flower. There's, there's very much, um, uh, there's a high uh, dosage of DMT within that. It's an MAO, which is going to bring on that I'm full, inhaling and I'm already seeing things. Yeah, that full um, serotonin agonist um, aspect of it where it's going to spike your natural serotonin you're going to feel really enlightened and happy afterwards. Well, is it enough for, for how many hits? This, well, I have two of these. You're talking like, I mean, bro, you could go to town on this fucking, this is, this is for you right here. Came a long way from that me down. I am not here for the run around. I am not here for the rig of Hey guys, welcome back to Golden Aesthetics. This is Artemis Dog and I'm here in Miami. Um, for a very special occasion besides my birthday, I'm meeting Eddie. Um, this is a holistic uh, specialist, holistic medicine specialist. Uh, I'm really curious to find out. He's my shaman, by the way. Look at him. This is this, this is God. God. This, this, is, this is this is my shaman, and he's the guy who was introducing me to DMT, to the trip of the DMT, and this is the actually the video blog and the podcast at the same time because I really want to document my experience. DMT has been given a lot of attention lately, you know, from Joe Rogan podcasts and it's been all over the internet. A lot of people are doing these trips and I'm really curious myself because I always seek the, the other side, you know, of my consciousness and I want always to express my consciousness. And once I mentioned something about DMT, somebody reached out to me and connected me with Addy, you know, so I started talking to him and it, it's a special type of experience. So you really have to go with your intuition. You have to go with the vibe. And I felt like this guy has it. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to introduce you, Addy, and he's going to tell you what he does, how he does it. He's going to tell you about the DMT, about the ayahuasca experiences, what you should expect, what you should not expect. We're just going to go in detail and let this the information go. Eddie, bro, I truly appreciate you. Besides all the cameras, besides yeah. everything coming to, to, to Miami for your own money, for paying for your own trip right. to introduce me to, to the DMT, brother. I truly, truly appreciate Eddie, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you. I really appreciate you, man. Yeah. Tell me about what you do. Who you are, because I don't really know much about right. you, just whatever I saw, whatever we talk about. Right. But we'd love to know how did you get into holistic medicine, why you practice it, what it's all about, okay. and then we'll get closer to the DMT and the ayahuasca. And we'll, Absolutely. We'll go I'll break there. down what we're all about. So, my name is Eddie Cortese. I'm from New Jersey. And, uh, you know, for me, my story starts off a um, party guy, you know what I mean, taking it to another level. I got caught up in the whole drug world, the opioid epidemic, everything that's going on. And, um, you know, you know, one thing leading to another was like a domino effect of shit. You know what I mean? Like uh, getting caught up and getting strung out on drugs, man. Um, my aunt, well, let me first off by, uh, first off say like, there were so many failed attempts on getting clean for me that um, I thought I was hopeless, you know? There's like no way out. And my aunt, who's like uh, the bookworm of the family, she was really researching integrative medicine, alternative medicine. And uh, she stumbled upon this plant medicine known as Ibogaine and did her research on it. And uh, started looking into it, the best places to go, you know, where it could be done, so on and so forth. And like, you know, on a wing and a prayer, they just sent me to Mexico to get this plant medicine done. Now, um, I'll explain about what Ibogaine does. <clears throat> what Ibogaine is, it's an extract from a tabernacle iboga bush, okay? okay? And it cleanses the neurotransmitters of the brain, giving a neurochemical reset. So it pushes all residual opioids out of the receptor sites and bonds to these receptors and from 24 to, 40, to 72 hours, it metabolizes into its half-life called noribogine. While, during this process, for up to three months, it actually rebuilds receptor sites to a pre-addicted state. Mm -hmm. Okay, It also cleanses your dopamine receptors. Now, this is where the obsession of using lies. Okay? Now, it causes the brain to create dopamine, serotonin, adrenaline, endorphins on its own again. Um, the one thing about this, it isn't just about the plant medicine itself. It's about how it's administered, how the body's prepared for the best bounce back recovery and experience in itself, okay? Um, you know, I have an amazing team that I wound up partnering with when I was so blown away by the, the results of this thing um, that we've been scooping people up left and right. And the whole gist of it is uh, we are 30 minutes south of San Ysidro border, okay? Um, we have a gorgeous villa on the beach, gated community, pools, jacuzzi, sauna, gym, the whole nine. And um, we have to get the body in order to prepare people for plant medicine. Is so, it like a rehab? Yeah, it's like a detox process, okay? okay? But it's not just for drug addiction. Mm -hmm. This is for like a spiritual awakening. This is for people that are going through addiction, depression, PTSD, 
or just want to really get connected. I actually want to thank you. It's an honor for me to do this. Um, I've been working with uh, plant medicine for three years now. And um, I don't consider myself a shaman or a healer. I consider myself a messenger to these plants. Uh, our goal is here to raise your consciousness, uh, bring you to a stronger, more sound uh, spirituality, and really just uh, get you connected to the universe, man. The, the whole goal of this is to pull you in to do ayahuasca. Um, but this is an amazing way to start it off, and uh, hopefully uh, that's the next step. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you, man. The whole um, point of this protocol is to align the GI tract, lowering negative liver enzymes, because we want you to be an open vessel for this plant medicine to work the way it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, 70% uh, of serotonin is created in our gut. So we create the brain-to-belly connection. You're put on a non-GMO organic diet, uh, daily juice cleansings, even organic coffee in this, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, for every three to five minutes, an organic coffee um, is, is held in, it fills and flushes the liver, releasing glutathione in the system, lowering negative liver enzymes. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's processed through our liver. So this is, this is what we're all about. Um, once you're there, you are administered something called NAD drips. It's called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And what it does is it actually is cell rehabilitation therapy. It starts clearing out the receptor sites and really just bringing your mental clarity back, your focus and, and your drive, your energy. You get Myers cocktail drips with that as well. Um, now, within a three-day buildup of those drips, if there's any withdrawals coming in, they're like at bay. We transition you from whatever you come in off of to a pure form of that medication, mm -hmm. just to keep withdrawals at bay while we align the system. Now, once the blood work is in order, oh, uh, and, and with that, you get echocardiogram, stress tests, and blood work after your assessment with our doctor, okay? Um, now, once the blood work is in order, you're administered this agony, okay? You go through this spiritual awakening experience. Um, That's what you've been through yourself? Yeah. Uh, this, is how, this is how you came around the yeah. medicine and... This is how I got into the field. How 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 fixed how fast did it fix you? And then what what was your experience like? And how did it change you overnight? Was it an overnight experience? Yes. And yeah. So what this is all about is preparing the body. You're ready to rock, right? From one day to the next, all withdrawals, if you're going through any at all, are gone. Flush. It's called a flood dose to the receptor mm -hmm. sites. It causes new neural pathways, which creates new thought patterns. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the obsession of the drug addiction is lifted or the depression, it reboots your receptor sites mm -hmm. to create our happy chemicals again. Mm -hmm. So you feel euphoric after, okay? Um, now, I was so blown away by this experience that I started shipping people left and right, not working for them yet, just like, yo, you gotta go there, you gotta go there. Next thing you know, they reach out to me, and we're like, dude, what are you doing here? Like, mm -hmm. let's, let's keep this thing going. You know, now, three and a half years later, we're still rocking, and we're, and we're helping a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, now, what we also bring to the table is, uh, is ayahuasca uh -huh. and we have our shaman come in we have shamans that work for us that they come in and they administer this plant medicine now um ayahuasca is <clears throat> dmt derived and then dimethyltryptamine and uh dmt is a serotonin agonist okay it raises natural serotonin it's known as nature's antidepressant and it has a up to six month shelf life where you feel like you know great man um, i did the dmt trip <clears throat> yes now now the difference between the ayahuasca is, um, you know, the, the, there is an enzyme called uh, monana, uh, myonine, no, oh my God, no, I'm sorry. That's, That's right. right. Myonine oxidase, um, I'm probably saying it wrong, um, that breaks down dimethyltryptamine in our system. Now, um, when the ayahuasca is made with the chipruna plant and the, um, the cappy, the cappy is what opens up the GI tract so it can be absorbed in our system and then dispersed throughout the system, throughout the body, to go on to this three to five hour experience. Um, tapping into your amygdala gland, getting to the root of your issues while giving you <clears throat> this spiritual connection. Okay, now DMT is infused by herbs along with what we have here, what I have here, is what's called changa. Okay, this is infused with herbs, passion flower, uh, peppermint, malene, that creates a high DMT content. Okay, but it's different from... Where the, did they take this DMT from? Okay, now the DMT um, in ayahuasca is made in Peru. Okay, we have our shamans that are um, traveling back and forth to Peru and back, and they bring you through this amazing spiritual awakening experience. Okay, um, it's incredible. It, it's... 
dude, to be a part of this is like, the words can't describe, okay? Because you, you feel so, so blessed to even be accompanied by these people, like within the same experience that, now they take it with you and they walk you through this process. You know, it sounds totally bad shit to like the normal people, okay? But when I mean raise your consciousness, I mean like turning the tune on a radio, like a dial, to where your vibration is fucking skyrocketed and your your overall consciousness is so far beyond um, the, the normal mind span, it's not even a joke. Why do you think those things exist in nature that, that, that people can use and, and really tap into the segment of consciousness or the depth of consciousness that they usually can't. Well, if there's a reason for how, what shamans explain about that, what is it the gift from the earth? What, because it's definitely taking you to a different dimension. Because I, yes, absolutely. Cool. So, like now, and I'm not going to veer off from that, we create that method to in our system, okay, right? in yeah. our liver, in our lungs, yeah, in our yeah. brain, our pineal gland. So, it's in plants, and this is how plants like communicate with other creatures. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is the like everything is connected dude right? it's the so safest it's, it's the it's the most like natural you know component or molecule to our existence mm -hmm. and what it does is it it induces this spiritual awakening experience where your ego is crushed okay you become like a baby okay everything that you thought of I'm is gone so crazy. everything that you you think that you have control of gone Okay, I am yours. And you have this feeling like of healing and love and you're consoled. And at the same time, you're a little scared. I like to say like our human side of the brain like is like, whoa, 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 what the fuck? I don't have control like I usually would. But you're not supposed to. You're supposed to let go and let God. If, if you want to call it God, you want to call it the universe, you want to call it whatever you want to call it, you're right. You want to know why? Because I look at spirituality like uh, or religion as like dialects of language. Okay. Um. I don't care where you're from or, or whatever. As long as you believe in something, I, I, I look up to that. You want to know why? Because I don't care what you call your God. It just it doesn't so happen that every part of the, the world is aiming to a higher source. And that's how I take pieces of other religions and could understand, you know, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, where, where their beliefs are. Um, this is just a full on connection with the universe and and total like, like understanding that we are all one. We're all here together to help each other and, and be what, a part of each other. What do you experience? What do you see when you take the DMT? Can you take me okay. through the process yes. of what's really happening in that moment and, and where your consciousness goes from here? What, what, is, what do you think in your opinion, personal opinion, because you've been through these trips before, in comparison to ayahuasca and then what ayahuasca, what, what is the difference would be so that people know? Okay, so... Now, ayahuasca takes you more of like a, a wave of an experience where you'll start going up and then you're tripping hard and then you come down. And there's almost like a question and answer phase of mm -hmm. that where you're like uh, literally saying like, what do I have to do? What do I have to change? Well, you're picking the cancers out in your life. And it's literally giving, feeding you, flooding you with information that you're like, oh my God, how, like I can't even process all of this. Um, while almost like showing you how wrong you are for the petty bullshit that we get caught up in in life, our day to day drama. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, when it comes to doing the DMT, DMT is like blasting you out of a fucking cannon, bro, to the peak of ayahuasca. Okay, and then transcends you down. Okay, so it's a it's a shorter experience, extremely intense, but like you come out of this like, wow, bro, what the fuck. It is like, and I've heard this before, it's like explaining the color green to a blind person. Until you are, have done it, it's like good luck explaining it. Uh -huh. You're going to come out of it and try to put words to it and be like, I, I, I don't. you got to just do it. Like, it's like that. It's so complex of sacred geometry flooding your fucking mind, dude. And, this, <laughs> dude, and I'm already tripping right dude, now just thinking about this. I'm it's so you, incredible that I'm it actually going to try it. It literally consumes your whole system. You feel vibrating and and like full on love and connection to a spiritual source, and you come out of this thing like wow, like I love you guys. Like it's like that, bro. Like 
I can see in your eyes. Yeah. You know, the moment I hit you up, I see the light in your eyes because yeah. um, I can tell that you went through a very intense spiritual right. awakening and a very spirit. You carry that spark. Right. You know, sometimes you look yeah. wise. And you don't see the spark. It's yeah. just blur. Yeah, know? man. And, and I can see that your eyes are sparked up when you talk, when you walk in. Yeah. You carry that, you know, a consciousness in your eyes. I could sense it, bro. I really do. Oh, I, I mean, appreciate that. I, I, and I'm really looking forward to this, you know, because uh, as I said, I've been I've been searching for myself all my life, and I went to monastery to be a priest when I was 16 because it was an answer to the questions that I had. Yeah. And then when that didn't work out, you know, I did LSD, and the only reason why I was doing all these drugs just to tap into the you know, not the side. I was really, really searching, trying to discover. And doing the DMT, I do have a lot of questions, you know, to myself. And I think this is one of the reasons why I'm doing it. Because right. it means I'm still searching. Of course. You, you know? And, and, I, and I could appreciate that. Like, listen, I'm not a know-it-all, bro. Uh, every day's a school day. You know what I'm saying? People could comment on this and teach me something. And I'm all for it, bro. You'll, we'll never know everything. And that's the whole point, bro. It's to be open and, and really just be about, like, learning and exploring and and evolving, okay? Because plant medicine is now really coming to fucking fruition where people are like, dude, wait, why haven't I done this before? Yeah, because it's of the acceptable. information, because of awareness and all that. There's so right. much more people can see it now on social right. media. It's because before that, nobody even wasn't talking about it. Right. I, my parents, they have no reconciliation what DMT mean, means, yeah. you know? They never tried bud. You know? yeah, <laughs> like, right, right. like a good strain of, yeah, they don't know the right. sativa or not, not that. Right. And the people around the world have no idea what that is. I didn't right. know until about DMT, about until I watched Joe Rogan, or about ayahuasca, right. you know. Yeah. And those are the things that you listen to the scientists, you know, that actually try it as well to expand their consciousness. Right. It's truly fascinating, man. It's truly fascinating to learn more and more about my nature. And you know, I heard this really. For me, it gives me hope that there is something after we die. Yeah. You, you know, do you, do you think yeah, that you dude, tap so, into something like right, that when now, you take DMT? Now, what I was taught along the way is like, oh, um, like the methotryptamine being that it's, you know, creating our system, it's especially released when we're born and when we die as like the portal in mm -hmm. a sense. And that's how we look at it because this is why I believe in it so much and because this has brought me to like visit family members that have passed away and loved ones and like to the point where during this experience, I'm seeing them, I'm hugging them, I'm smelling them, okay? And it's like that, dude. Like, like people that come to my place, like, and I'm partnered in this place, and I am not the healer here, okay? I walk people through plant medicine, dude, and I have a team of licensed doctors and facilitators that have been doing this a decade and could fucking school me up and down, and I'm all about it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not... The, no, move over, you know, I need the fucking center stage. No, man, I'm here to help. And this is what we do in this world. We help each other, okay? So the whole thing with the plant medicine is we get you there, we walk you through, keep you comfortable, let you know you're going to be okay, and the plants do the talking for us, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the therapy. Ibogaine is known as 10 years of therapy in one night, okay? Ayahuasca, you will 100%, if you're not a believer in a god, you will 100% be like, Okay, maybe I gotta question that. Maybe, maybe there is something out there. Dude, to me, boom, that is the, the source to my God. Okay? The portal to the, the next stage or or showing me that there's proof that there's something else out there. Fucking proof, dude. Like I don't even doubt it. So you it don't a think bit. that we just so just die and we just disappear no. and there is darkness. I think it's so there's much no more complex that our brain can even handle. You really want to believe that. Bro, I, because it gives you like I the hope really, that you really exist and extend beyond death. I, uh, I really believe that. Because the, the idea of not existing terrifies me. You know, mm -hmm. that's why I was probably searching for all those answers to extend myself further beyond death, beyond you know, human death. Because I think all of us, we don't want to die. That's just right. a, ingrained right. into our like genes and our survival, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. instincts. But um, what is the biggest change that you see after you take DMT, let's say for the first time? What is the... What happens next? But when you come out out of it, what, what what is your? How do you feel mentally? How do you feel physically? What you should expect after that, and and what you should do, like in terms of relaxing, or what what what, what would be your advice, man? All right. Well, for me, um, plant medicine itself is like a lifestyle change once you buy into it. Okay. After coming out of the DMT, you're enlightened because you're like, whoa, I was not here during that moment of time, like for that 10 minutes or whatever it may be, you were like, dude, where the fuck was I? So now you have a different perspective on like 
even your thought process on death after the, you know whatever because you're like but where was that okay am i going there is that heavy like you start questioning everything now being that there's proof that there's something more than this phase this you know vibration um now all of a sudden that's when the questioning starts to happen where maybe you want to embark on doing ayahuasca and get more answers. Um, our shamans train me to administer DMT because they want to pull people in to do ayahuasca to get to the source, to get to the mother ayah, the mother of all these plants, grandmother ayahuasca, it's um, known as. Um, and dude, and it is what it is. Like the whole thing here is we're not supposed to know all the answers and we never will, man. You know? And it doesn't matter who you're with, you came in this world alone, you leave this world alone. You don't walk out holding on to anybody's hand, bro. You got to get good with you and your God. That's it. Whoever that may be, bro. I, there's no right or wrong answer to that. Do people start taking DMT a lot more often after they try it for once or they well, never do it again? DMT is not like a, let's fucking burn DMT tonight. And it's like, dude, up until this day, my heart's racing like a motherfucker if I'm about to do DMT. I am fucking sweating <laughs> palms right now. We do, Bro, because we're doing it tomorrow and I've been thinking about this the whole week. <laughs> I've been preparing myself, man. I've been calling yeah. my boy like, Eddie, Eddie, man, you ready? He's like, man, that's what I think about too. Right. You know, it, it is, I don't know what it is, but it is naturally brings a sense of anxiety. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you think about it and it is unknown. Yeah. You know, and it just triggers your mind and your consciousness. And like even right now when I'm speaking, I'm triggered. Because that molecule is really produced in my body. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's so it's interesting. So natural, how, so natural to us, though. That's the best part. And, and when our shaman started bringing this over from Peru, it was like I was just testing on me at first. Here, I want you to hit this, and I want you to nail this thing, this pipe, until I tell you to stop. And I'm like, what the fuck? Freaking out, dude. And seeing, like, beings and sacred geometry is, like, so far beyond my fucking... While the thought process and you don't like, try to go crazy like that. Do you think mm, people lose their shit? No, man. Because you people get scared like, and like freak out. All right, this is why he trained me the way he did to walk people through this because I could be very soothing during this experience. Uh -huh. If you're scared, tell me you're scared. Because <laughs> so I'm good. not gonna Come judge you, bro. Like dude, it's not like you're a pussy. It's uh -huh. not like I'm gonna fucking coddle you. Of course, this is like. I'm just here to bring you back to this reality if you're freaking out, uh -huh. okay? And there are ways to ground you, okay? Um, that, And it's very short-lived. So it's not like you're on ayahuasca and you drink that shot and you're in for the long haul, like, <laughs> see you in a few hours, <laughs> dude. It's like, yeah. But what, is, what happens, what do you, like, do you close your eyes when you do DMT yeah. or you keep your eyes open? And if you keep your eyes open, what do you see? Okay, so... <laughs> Depending on how hard you nail it. I want to hit it hard. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> um, you know what? Listen, it's going to induce this extremely warm experience and the sacred geometry is going to start. You want to keep your eyes closed. And sometimes I even, if we do it during the day, I usually like put like a little sleeping mask on someone. And I got music playing and we put you through this experience. Some people don't want the mask, which you don't have to have. Because you may want to see what it's like to open your eyes. See what it's like to keep it closed. What, do you, what is the difference, tell me? Dude, well, depending on how hard you hit this thing, sometimes it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Sometimes <laughs> it's like, you're no, gone. open your eyes or not, you're fucking, you're gone, dude. Um, but the reason why I like to keep my eyes closed is because you takes you so deep. And so far at the same time, like they say, like some people go through traveling the universe to some people just go into this, like, like they dove in a kaleidoscope and it's just like, bro, where was I, man? And, um, and some people see beings and some people don't, and, and we don't really know what you're going to see. Okay. And I don't know what you do. Even... Do you see, do you find that people see the same thing that let's say you were talking to someone's like, well, I've been seeing this being. Can you see the same being? Right um, yes, absolutely. Um, I've related to so many people on so many levels when they talk about their experiences. Because like I said, when my shaman would bring it, before we would have to administer it to patients, he would do it on me. Like, almost like trying his product. And I was like, 
hi, like she's back. I'm like How sweating. Walks in, walks in the door. I don't do it that often. Okay. But that scared me. I was like, no, no. Like, oh, dude, you're throwing out tears. There. Yeah, there. Yeah. And we call it the grandmother's tears. Okay, DMT. Okay. Um, we we know it as the, as the tears. Okay. Um, because grandmother because ayahuasca. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, and it's it's made with the cappy vine. It's made with passion flower. And, and the ayahuasca is it a plant? Yes. Um, there ayahuasca is made with um two different plants. One enhancing enhancing the dimethyltryptamine factor, and then one that is really made to open up your GI tract so it could be absorbed throughout the Do system. Do you know where it comes from? Yes, like where that's, the origins that's of an, ayahuasca? Well, well that's from Peru. Be, they put it together, yeah, but they took those two things yeah, and it makes sense. Okay, this is what you do they're, in they're order to get They're literally picking vines and, and leaves and they're banging them to open up the the whole um, experience of... That's crazy. The, yeah, the, think about it, the, what they do with it. Dude, I honestly... The science is so complex, but so simple to them. But like when you actually hear about like what it's doing to... To create this oxidation throughout this, it's 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 Fascinating. genius. Fascinating. It's it's amazing, and um, like I listen, like I said, I'm so far from being a know-it-all, dude. I am a testimonial of plant medicine that changed my life, and that's why I got involved in this thing. Um, I I don't like to call myself like the marketing end of the business. I like to call myself uh, you know, well, like you got the guy me into it though, or whatever. Yeah, you got me into but it. dude, saying, it's man, just so like. Beautiful. I'm like, yo, you want to wake the fuck up for okay. real? Let's go. Dude, that's yeah. meant to be, I believe. Yeah, I believe in You know, because like, DMT doesn't come around your life so often. You just don't pop up and say, hey, man, you want to get a hit? Yeah, it's like, no. you come to Miami, you do a lot of cocaine. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole different mindset that you should be in, you know? Um, and, and and I was, t- it, it just came easy to me. Right. And I'm going to be 35 tomorrow and I... I do it intuitively, man, because I have a family at home. Like, I have my mom that just came from Ukraine and my brother are there. And that's my birthday, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like the only, like, it's kind of a family thing. Yeah. But look where I'm at, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm in Miami trying to do DMT. I love Miami. Yeah. Because um, that was the first town where I saw the ocean, I think, for the first time. And I came here um, to do, like, a stripping gig. And I ended up staying here and I ended up <laughs> fucking getting into bank bros and just fucking living the whole, you know, like year of just fucking wild and craziness, bro. Oh, so craziness, you know? And then at that time, I was still, I was also still exploring my nature. I was trying to figure out who I want to be. Yeah. And I'm still at the same, at that same, I guess, stage, I guess. Some people don't figure it out until they're 50, what they are, who they are, what they want to be. Right, right. And it's totally normal because some of the greatest people you know, and greatest artists find themselves when they're 40 or 50 or 60, yeah. you know, but some people discover themselves earlier in the age and I'm still searching like who I am, like what, what is my purpose right. in life and, yeah. and doing DMT tomorrow, it only adds to that experience because to be honest, man, I don't think that I need spiritual awakening because when I left the monastery, I think, you know, I had like a very profound experience. I was sitting on a, on a, on a little, like, um, on the shore uh, in the forest, you know, there was like a little river and it was a uh, springtime and I was looking at the sun and, you know, the wind and I just felt so present at that moment. I start crying, yeah. you know, and I was looking at the sun and I saw this little net, you know, flying through the, through the, through the, uh, through the air and the sun was reflecting on it, bro. I felt so present and I felt so alive and I was a kid. Yeah. I was 13 years old, you know, yeah. and I had that, I start crying. I remember, I'm telling you this right now. I remember this to this moment. It's been 30 years ago, yeah. you know, 20 years ago. Right. And until this day, I am the same guy, you know, right, trying right. to, I, and I think that I had two moments where I felt that spiritual awakening. It was that one. And it was another one was in the ocean. I was surfing on Black's Beach in San Diego all by myself. It was a sunset and, you know, the, the birds are flying over the ocean and just the picture is so happy and the waves are crashing and the sun is settling down. And I just felt, tears right. just coming down right. you know and i wasn't controlling it that was just going through me yeah. and i felt so incredibly connected to the earth to nature um didn't really have any words to describe it i couldn't really explain it to myself why i'm feeling that certain way right. it was a very sensational feeling man yeah and i think what i'm looking for in this trip for me is personally is my ego man yeah i really want to get rid of it i feel like right. my ego is uh getting on the way uh, I feel like I experience, I, I don't think it's um, on purpose, but I do feel uh, experience a certain type of hate to people that are very more successful than me. Yeah. Uh, because you compare your life to them. Yeah. 
and when your life is not that great, your ego be- turns this defensive mechanism and say, mm. fuck them. Yeah, right. Fuck that motherfucker. Right. Fuck that piece of shit. Right. And I don't know why, and your brain starts fucking circulating in that frequency. Right. You know, and I think people that have no goal in their life or have nothing going on for themselves, I think they live within that hate, you know? And, and for me, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm an achiever, right. you know? But I can't help but to feel that, you know? Right. And that's what I'm looking for. Um, in this particular trip, I really want to see my ego and I want to see what I can do in order to deflate it or to get rid of it and how it, it is to be living outside of it. Right. You know, bro, I was talking to some guy yesterday. He's a great businessman in, in LA, very successful dude. And he was telling me about how important it is to really share your experiences and embracing your struggles because by doing that, you're not just doing it for yourself, you're also doing it for other people that are around you. Right. You know what I mean? Because you help them elevate themselves. At least by one millimeter. Just by one. If yeah. you can re- pick them up at least by one. And that that kind of shows you he's a very successful dude. Yeah. That motherfucker has no ego. Yeah. And I think that's the secret to really being successful and to be really satisfied with yourself in life and to be an achiever, you know, and to be really a real person. Yeah. You know, because you have this I think the society, there's this new society kind of forming, you know, within the social media and, and the images that people create for others online and they become those images. And they're right. not very sincere. Right, right. You know what I mean? You yeah. like meet people and there. Right? There is like yeah. a whole another person there. Yeah. And I don't care about what they do, but I just don't find the truth in it. I don't find that satisfying and, and stimulating my mind to the most extreme nature that I am. You right. know, if those people want to be that way, fuck them. I don't give a right. fuck. You know, but for me, for myself, I refuse to go down that path because in some in some way you're forced to do that because um, then you know with all the algorithms they're telling you what to post how to post it and you become that thing right they right. want to satisfy everyone and you become that guy mm. you can't help it but you become that guy you don't really have anything valuable honorable because you do everything for validation right so your your intention is not real, that's not you. You're not truly expressing yourself. Yeah. You're expressing what other people expect from you, what they want. Yeah. You know, and I'm falling down into that spectrum as well. That's why I'm I'm doing this and that's why I'm I'm, I'm trying to be and stay as real as possible. That's why I've been going through conflicts and all that shit with the people that I used to sponsor and the people that I work with because I'm a real guy. Right, I can right. pretend. Yeah. And, and that's what the fucking this Chinese dude, Korean dude was telling me yesterday, it's like Artemis man, you you you, you have to play with people like Chaz, bro. Like, if you want to be successful in business, just fucking do the math. Just play it around. And, you know what I'm saying? But I was like, man, I can't do that. Like, right, that. I'm right. emotional. I you know? That, but in order, but the business doesn't tolerate emotion. Right. Now the business is calculated thing, bro. You oh, know what I mean? I hear you. So, right. like, I'm kind of like, I'm in, in between. But I, I do believe that remaining genuine and remaining sincere you're truly making a difference mm-hmm. you know you truly elevate people and I know there's a lot of guys that attempt they tapped into this you know viral content you know in fitness world or whatever you know some really dumb shit that doesn't really add quality or value or stimulate your mind it just entertains your dumbass brain for yeah. a second the guy yeah. think oh, I think crazy weight and that's that's what all you watch you know or some gossips and stuff you know it yeah. doesn't like I respect what people do, but this is I want to create value. I want to put something out there. There's one person, maybe ten people gonna watch my video, and maybe one person is gonna get a little bit about a little meter meter. I think that's what brings a true energy to the universe and truly gives you a blessing of being a human being. That's the true nature of, course, of human man. being of yeah. fi- of making this world just a little bit better place than you found it by lifting that one person. Yeah. You know, and I think if everybody will live that way. There will be no hunger, there will be no poverty, there will be no hate, there will be no wars. We'll be all fucking happy people, man. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah, that, that, that's what this did for me, man. Like, this showed me the true value and just, like, you know, one person helping another, man. And uh, it brought me to where I'm comfortable in my own skin, and that's where I'm trying to get other people. You know, um, I don't hold the medical end of the business. I walk people through this, and I'm just like, yo, guys, like, if I can get better in life than I was, then so can you, because I haven't met that that many people that were as bad as me, um, you know. So you um, did meet drug addicts and, and um, depressed people, because I know that they've been using DMT now f- to treat post-dramatic disorder, you yeah. know, people that come back from, you know, Iraq mm-hmm. or Afghanistan from wars, 
and that, but I didn't know how that works. Well, what it does is it taps into the amygdala gland of the brain, and this is where our suppressed memories are. Every traumatic event, Fuck, and that's, all the, that's exactly what I wanted to learn yeah, about. Yeah, now every painful thing that we've gone through that we stuff and try to, you know, you know, put away, sweep under the rug, this gets um, tapped into where it helps you process these pain and emotions where it's like you can move on from this. You're strong enough. You are good enough. You can let go now. And it's like, oh my God, man. It's, a, it's such an awakening in that aspect because so many people, not only drug addiction, not only depression, PTSD, so many people just have so many hangups in life over such petty bullshit, bro. And it means nothing, okay? And when you zoom out, and, and you just say, like, yo, listen, we're here for each other, man. Somebody's been in your shoes. They got you. Like, that's a great feeling for someone, you know, yes. to, to, to understand it and, and be there for them. And, you know, and when it comes to drug addiction, these plants showed me how dark and demonic those drugs are, man. And it was like, yo, look how beautiful your life can be. Look where it is now or where it was. And it gives you a healthy fear. Like, holy shit, you know, I don't want to be there. I want to be here. You well, know, there, is there a before. possibility of having a bad trip? Well, during DMT, yeah, it's not necessarily a bad trip. It's nerves. Okay, so you could go through anxious moments, but that's when I've had to just like, listen, you're doing great. Just breathe, let go. And then all of a sudden, they'll get over that hump, and then, oh, okay, you know what? You're surfing. I'm great. But the, if you just really let go, go deep, go far, man, you'll enjoy it so much more. Knowing you will be back in fucking five minutes. You will be back in ten minutes, well, however... Um, longer experience lasts. You will. What You're going to be normal. Last thing on the DMT. Um, well, this type of DMT, the Changa, lasts about ten minutes. Okay, tops. And then you can and, hit it again. Yeah, and if you want to come time. out of it and hit it again, you rock away, bro. But how long you can stay in DMT for like that? Um, well, listen. There's not necessarily a, a cap on this. You're just gonna tap out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for real, bro. Even if you're a bad motherfucker. Yo, if you're a bad motherfucker, I thought I was a badass, bro. <laughs> I'm like this after. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, you, your ego is fucking shattered. So you come out and you're just like, man, I'm, this is it. I, 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 what the fuck? What, what, what? Dude, I come out and I'm like, oh my God, I have so much I have to change. Like, I shouldn't do this anymore. I should. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, fuck you. You <laughs> know what, man? That's what I've done it before this DMT experience, right? Mm -hmm. I uh, really try to resolve all the skeletons, you know, to take the skeletons out of the closet that I had because mm -hmm. I knew that would bother me. They would bother me on this trip. You know, like I had in Texas, I had to get an order. I had to go to the dentist. I had to get insurance. I had to get, <laughs> get so many things that I've been neglecting because as much as I am um, a driven human, I'm fucking disorganized bro mm -hmm. like I don't have the organization to keep numbers in track you know, like I have to ask other people and assistants to do it all the time mm -hmm. and I have to drag some stuff out of my closet that I've been keeping there for a long time yeah. you know so that way it doesn't bother me because I knew that there's things I need to change yeah. like I had a fucking phobia of dentists man I yeah. had phobia of dentists because I had a very dramatic uh, childhood experience they pulled my teeth without anesthesia with fucking pliers dude literally pliers look at fucking <laughs> In Russia, just like, <laughs> and your parents are holding your fucking. Oh, you said, "Fuck you! What are you doing? What are you doing?" They're just fucking. They're just holding you down. They're holding you down, and this fucking thing guy is holding your fucking head. Do you understand yeah, that? That fucks you up. Yeah. And you're a kid. Yeah, man. And they're sustaining you. You know what I mean? Like that. Fuck with my head so bad. Every time I heard a fucking drill and a dentist drill, I was like twitching. Fuck you. <laughs> Not that I'm like scared, but I just I just had that. Yeah, you know what I mean. That was a ma I knew that was a trauma, you know. Yeah. And this time, um, my ex girlfriend she motivated me to do, to actually start doing things for myself because I think that's how you know it's the right woman because she brings out the best in you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you want to change, and I, she really started that change in me. So I was like, fuck it, man. So I went to the dentist three weeks ago, bro, and it just fucking. Yeah. That was six years of work in there. Yeah, six that's years. Rough, dude. You know what yeah. I mean? And I was like, fuck, I was so ashamed of myself when I walked into the dentist. I was like, babe, I'm so sorry. Like, I, it's like, oh, you want to look? Because they, they start working on it. And yeah. they're like, I have to implant here, but they're, and they're just giving the mirror. I was like, I don't want to look in there. Yeah. Just fucking get it done, finish it, and then and that's it. So I was able to get that out of the way, and I could tell that. It sort of like unlocks something in you, like, like it pops a nut, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah. that, because you carry those things in the closet and 
I feel like that's what um, I really want to do with the DMT because I feel like there is something that holds me back to truly um, going after acting. Mm -hmm. Dude, I, that's the only thing I would regret if I don't do it in my life. Yeah. You know, like I, I was thinking like, ah, like about moving to Bali and like buying some kind of a coffee shop and still having a little business here. Right. Just living a very simple down to earth life. And I think about it, like, no, I want to do acting. And that's how that's I know, awesome, that's how I know that I wouldn't be content. You know, it's cool to wake up every day to the ocean and to the water and... But if there is no challenge to me, right. there is no progress. And if there is no progress, there is no happiness to me. That's it. You yeah. know what I mean? So I, but I do feel like there is some, some sort of insecurity. I'd be very sincere and open right now, bro. Right. Um, there is some kind of insecurity in me that kind of tells me that I'm not good enough or keeps me away mm -hmm. from really mentally become really sharp, you know? Because right. um, it, it will require stepping out of the comfort zone. Bro, yeah. all dreams die in the comfort zone. Bro. And I am in the comfort zone now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm making okay money. And, you yeah. know, I have a lifestyle that I really wanted to have. I mean, of course, I want to have more and more cars and, you know, more materialistic shit and more freedom and stuff that comes yeah. with money. But that not really fulfills me. Yeah, you know man. what I mean? That's not yeah. the sense of fulfillment. It's good to have stuff. But, you know, and as much as when I say now, people say, like, oh, man, fuck you. Like, bro, I've been, I've, I've been bummed, you know what I mean? I've been bummed, yeah. like, like a joke, like a fucking roofer job and walking to the gas station in minus 25, 30 degrees and mm -hmm. just, you know, being a fucking laborer on the, on the, on the, you know, on the street just fucking hanging out with Mexicans and other illegal immigrants just to get a contractor job. Right. Like, I've been through that and it's really cool to have things and to have decent materialistic stuff. But in the end of the day, not really, the true essence of life is to do what you love. Yeah. You know? And I'm really like, passionately excited about acting and it's something that always triggered my mind and I think that's why I went through this like all these crazy experiences of being a stripper and then a fucking monk you know and selling cars I kind of took all these different roles you know right. and I thought this is my fucking shit I'm gonna be the best car dealer in the fucking Chicago yeah. I'll be flipping cars I'm gonna do my own showroom and that's like at that moment until I fucking met the guy at the gym, he told me, man, you should compete. And I competed. Then all that thing about cars disappeared. I was like, yeah. fuck cars. I'm going to do bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So I'm doing bodybuilding. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to be the greatest bodybuilder yeah. of all time. I'm going to fucking do this. Yeah. And then, fuck, I want to be a designer. Yeah. And I'm just going into the designing thing. And everybody thinks like, man, he, he could be the best bodybuilder of time for sure. Or he could be the fucking best car salesman. Or he could be yeah. the best. Like, I actually make people believe because I'm so passionately into it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what acting is all about, is like living truthfully under imaginary circumstances, you know? Yeah. So I don't know this whole experience, what I'm going with it, like doing podcasts and doing clothing, uh, but I know it's taking me to a next level, bro. Yeah, man, that's it. Everything that, anything that I've ever done in my life, everything that I ever took on, took me to the next level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm hoping that this experience is also gonna um, put me in a different mindset, so to speak, or really help me deal with my personal issues that I'm, re I'm refusing to deal with in my conscious mind right. because they scare me or they require enormous amount of work, yeah. you know? So that that's the, I'm, I'm really fascinated, man. You really got me, you really you got me excited for this, man. Listen, like, like you're saying, man, materialistic shit's nice, but the real success is inner peace. You know what I'm saying? When you're good with you, man, it's like, yo, we got this one life, bro. How you want to live it, bro? What are you going to do, man? You're not happy? You got to fucking change it. Only your effort, your energy is going to change it. You know what? going to do it for you. And uh, do you feel, do you feel sometimes like they use sometimes around people that are not enlightened and the people that are very tense and they bring this really f weird physical vibe? Like, you know, like, bro, you, could like you could close your eyes and see their aura. It's dark. You could see somebody walk in the room. And you don't want to be around them. And, and you kind of feel sorry for that guy and you just want to get rid of him. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's a bad thing to say because I know some people like that. And I'm sometimes I'm forced to work with those people. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I just can't. Why can't you just be a fucking nice guy? Yeah. Like, why I can't just look at people like that like they're lost, man. Lost souls, you know. Um, there's certain things in life that I, I like to say like a master soul. Do you think taking ayahuasca will, or taking DMT will definitely... Fix them in that regard. Um, or listen, it's it's a everyone's a work in progress. 
there's no silver bullet to uh, someone's personality in a sense. Um, certain awakening experiences could give them different perspectives on how they want to live their life or how they treat other people. Like, or, and also, listen, wisdom through experience, man. Like, I, I when I was young, I'd be like, oh, look at that fucking junkie. You know what I'm saying? Until I became a junkie, bro. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it was like a humbling thing. Like, whoa, I understand you, man. Everything I've been through is just like, I get you, bro. I understand you. And then, like I said, there's no better comfort than someone that's been there, done that, that same bullshit that you're going through. And they're like, yo, there's light at the end of that tunnel, bro. Do you, you know? think people are ready? Anybody would be ready for the DMT? Let's say you take a random person and say, hey, do you want to try DMT? He's like, yeah, I want to try it. Do you think the things that he's going to see are going to be different from the person that's truly tried to awaken himself or need to awaken himself? Yes, I think it's definitely different. I think you have to have a calling for it. And also, um, depend, you know, like new levels, new devils, bro. Everyone's dealing with different demons. You know what I mean? In a sense. So some people have like a... Uh, you could go through a darker experience if you're dealing with some real negativity in your life. Um, it, it, you know, it's like, where is your vibration at, bro? If you're, if you're a, a overall happy person and, and you have a real appreciation for life, most likely you're going to have an amazing experience, okay? If you're dealing with some deep and dark shit, you know, you got some roots you got to break, bro. You might have to fucking go through a little bit of a battle. Um, what about the age? Do you think it matters what age people um, do that? I, I do. Um, first off, like, I don't treat this as like, uh, yo, there's true balls, dude. No, I look at this as medicine. That's why I never have sold this shit. I have never, like, I look at this as like sacred plant medicine that, that I, like, I won't even give it to my boy to go give to his friends or his family. I'd be like, listen, I want to be there. My shaman showed me the right way to administer this. And, and they say, you treat, I pray over you during this experience. I'm not like, yo, hit this, bro, kick back and laugh at you. I take this very serious. This is what saved my life, man. You know, and I'm just trying to enlighten other people along the way. You know, it's beautiful, man. I truly appreciate that. Um, You know, learning about this and hearing how amazing and sacred it is. Uh, You know, because when you walk in, I was like, man, that look, that boy looks like a, looks like me. You know what I mean? Like, like a stripper or something. You know, like a a playboy. You know, but. Again, you can't really judge the the book by its cover, yes, you know. Yeah. And, and once you get to talk to you and hear how enlightened you are, man, I truly appreciate you. I'm really looking forward to this. Me too. Um, are there any side effects after you take this? Like you come off and you know how, like, let's say you do your trip on acid and then you have mm-hmm. this this flashbacks in a way. Is there anything like this with DMT? Well, some people don't like, not necessarily don't remember it, but it's like. They're so shocked. It's like a sensory, like a shock of, of what you've been through that you're like, whoa, dude, I almost like, it happened so fast. Like, what is, I can't even process all of this. And then some people have such this awakening experience like they're like, I'll never forget that in my life. Everyone's different. But it is a serotonin agonist where you are going to have that natural lift of like, wow, man, I feel good. I feel happy. You know, um, the ayahuasca is a longer acting effect of that. Um, and it has man, many healing properties. The DMT just brings you to this enlightening feeling where um, you definitely have this spiritual awakening and, and it, you've, it, it proves things to you that there is so much more than, than you could even imagine. Do you think okay. that world, where you go with DMT exists without you taking it? I mean, there is a way um, to get there without well, taking that. Yeah, stuff. well, like, all right, so now there's ways about, like, going through these mini, like, almost psychedelic trips. Like, people go through transcendental meditation and yoga, and some people could really get there, man. Um, this just totally induces this spiritual awakening that um, that there's, like, no fighting it. There, there's no, like, I gotta sit here and get deep. This is just, like, boom, see you, and, and you just uh, glass it off. Um, Cause so it's a lot harder than it sounds to do like transcendental meditation for some. I actually got good at it after you know doing this plant medicine. Um, there's things that people say you decalcify the pineal gland, like uh, there's things like fluoride, things like like that are really bad for us that they say calcifies your pineal gland. Certain ways of eating and so on and so forth. Um, but once once you go through this plant medicine and they say awakens your third eye, it's easier to do that type of uh, that type of thing uh, stuff when it comes to. Oh well, man, somebody wants to hit you up. How do they find you? How does the process start? Um, I will definitely link you with with with, right. with my page. You know, okay. guys, I'll leave the website, whatever the contacts. I'll leave them in the, in uh, on my page and on the YouTube channel so that way people get a, get a hold of you because. 
Man, you sound like a very sound guy. I really, really like. I think we're gonna sit down after we do because yeah, this is the yeah. video that we're gonna put out before the DMT experience because right. we're gonna do it tomorrow. Because as I said, I want to do like a little ceremony of me just fasting because I feel like when you fast, you're in this zone. Yeah, you absolutely. know, your mind is very alert. Yeah. You know, and when you have full stomach of carbs, you're sleepy. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not. So I like to be really alert. So I'm gonna go through a training tomorrow. You know, like through the run and just get myself in a very positive mindset because I want to, yeah, man, I want to make this trip very memorable for me because, you know, 35, um, I never thought that I would be 35. I always rejected the fact that I will age ever. <laughs> yeah. I remember turning 30 and I was like, I'm sitting on the couch at home like, man, I don't want to be 30. Yeah. Fuck. It means I have to take responsibility for my life. Right. You know what I mean? Because when you're early 20s, you don't give up. Fuck. Right. Right. You're just like, man, just suck it, bitch. You know, you don't give up. <laughs> fuck, you know? Yeah. But, Right, right now, I matured so much throughout these years and I've been through so many things that made me, you know, shape as a person. And I feel like, man, I'm getting into my prime now and I got really good people around me. So I'm really, you know, man, I really care about people mm. and I really care about the people that I impact and influence. And I think it brings a lot of blessings back into my life, man, because I'm able to do this, you know, I'm a simple guy from nowhere, mm. you know, and to be sitting here in Miami overlooking these things and going through yeah. this type of experience, bro, I'm blessed. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm truly happy and I truly appreciate you, man. I, I would, as right. I said, guys, we're going to do, that, that's me being clueless chicken, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't fucking have no idea what I'm signing up for. I'm truly excited. I'm, I'm open, you yeah. know, I'm open to every experience. Brother, so, want, so real quick, um, the Hope Dealer Forty Two on Instagram. You could also find me on Facebook as uh, under the Hope Dealer. Um, I could holistichopehouse.com is our website. I could always hook whoever up to the medical end if they want to speak to our um, doctors or facilitator about uh, the current situation. Um, I, I what is, tell me what kind of people yeah. would would really need this? Um, definitely people dealing with drug addiction. Okay. Um, I have a game, the neurochemical reset. Okay, it lifts the obsession of using. Dude, that right there, it takes away from the emotional roller coaster of detoxing. That's fucking huge for people. Okay, no withdrawal, no pain, no suffering. Right there, that that's huge for people. People with depression, PTSD, it reboots the receptor sites, man. It causes the brain to create your happy chemicals on its own again. Not transition you from one drug to another like Western medicine. This isn't like, oh, I feel like this one, I think this. No, dude, this is going to cleanse your neurotransmitters, dude. And it sounds complex and wild, but the science behind it is all fucking, there, there's, you know, there's proof in the pudding. There's testimonials everywhere. I can yeah, I hear it all down the damn block. You know what I mean? We've got a lot of people doing this. And um, and I get you there. I walk you through the process. I talk you off the ledge if you need to. And the medical line just takes over, dude. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't touch Ibogaine. That's um, all the doctors, the ayahuasca done by the shamans. You know, um, they trained me to, to administer the DMT to lead the way to them. Well, I'll, I guess I'll see you next trip on the ayahuasca, yeah. brother. Yeah, bro, that's right. Listen, step. man, I'm really looking forward yeah, to this experience. Yeah, me too, I really bro. am. Me too. Are you ready? Are you, are you, are you going to try it or not? Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, I'm going to grab a whole bunch of different things. So. Huh? Yeah. To start. Yeah, it's interesting, right? <laughs> it's fucking so... It's fascinating. You just think about it. It's like, holy shit, how is it going to be? What is it going to be? Because I've seen Joe Rogan experience... And I've seen like the pictures that they're showing like, that the, the painters drew after taking oh, ayahuasca, yeah. all these geometrical things. Oh, yeah. And you could tell that the Egyptian culture was really affected by the DMT Dude. because of all the colors that they have. And, you know, mm, yeah. to tap into that fucking knowledge is so fascinating. I love this word, fascinating. Because, right. uh, dude, it's... You're so used to just one way of thinking yeah. when, and they're feeding you this thing every single day, the fucking career, the job, the right. fucking education, the fucking bills, right. the fucking taxes, all this stuff. Just do it, do it, right. do it. And you become this fucking rat. You're just right. fucking going right. through this life. You're just fucking, yeah. you don't know what the fuck. You're just rushing to the job, you know, so you got to take care of your bills and you don't stop and think, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. What's the fucking purpose of this whole thing? What am I fucking doing with my life? Like, That's right. is it this 90 years and just fucking do this and, and then the pension, and you're you're not truly aware of who you are, where you're going, yeah. who you, who, what's the existence what's the of yours, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like the ruling elite and the way the society has been shaped throughout centuries and thousands of years is made that way to keep weak, weak, 
to keep poor poor and whoever is in, in power in there they want to stay in power forever yeah, you know so that's they a whole raised other yeah subject. that's a whole yeah they, they raised the society that way and then, then what ayahuasca does and you know just like I want to ask you about I don't want to go too much into the conspiracy but is DMT considered a legal substance yeah man in, in the US these holy are, fuck yeah, these are schedule one um, you know drugs in the US and it's crazy that alcohol is not. People so kill people. People kill it's others in alcohol. So the schedule one is labeled uh, no medical value and highly addictive. These plants are have high medical value and no addictive properties. What the fuck? Well, wait, they just delegalize. Uh, no, they decriminalize psilocybin Mushrooms in, in, Denver. in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's some power for people in Denver. Well, well. And then they do dimethyltryptine as well. What is the difference between, by the way, I so, wanted to ask you that shit right. about the mushrooms and the DMT. Is there a difference? So, yeah, so like, so during the experience itself, um, they almost say, uh, ayahuasca is like a lot more spiritual and poetic rather than like, it's almost like, the the strict mother and like the silly uncle in a sense when it comes to like um the the explaining in that way because <laughs> during uh you know shrooms you could see fucking pink elephants all of a sudden and like just be tripping on some wildness um but really get a total spiritual value out of the whole experience in itself an awakening um ayahuasca is more of spiritual connection question and answer if if it tells you what you need to hear. It shows you what you need to see. It could whoop your ass into shape or it could also console you and love you the way you, you've always needed. Um, it's there to heal you. Um, it, like being that, so, so being that it, it has the cappy um, vine in it and, it and it opens up the GI tract so it could be the dimethyltryptamine can be absorbed in that way. That's how the healing properties happen. Um, uh, the... In psilocybin, um, the, the dimethyltryptamine, it does get processed through the liver um, and then is dispersed throughout the system in that way. So it's a totally different aspect of an experience, more of just like a uh, through the bloodstream to the brain inducing an, a trip rather than um, opening up into your GI and actually healing uh, healing things. Um, like there's, a, you know, there's a cancer fighting um, agents in ayahuasca. Uh, there's all there. My mother, okay, I'll, I'll, quick story. My mother had a, a spot on her ovaries that we were really scared about. And um, she went into the ayahuasca girl, and uh, she, afterwards, she, and, and let me explain something to you. My mother did ayahuasca. She told my, my wife, You're gonna have a baby. He's gonna have a bang across his face. A little Asian look just like you. Well, you're gonna name him Sam. Boom, we found out a couple months later she was having a baby. You know, my best friend that passed away, his name was Sam. We named him after my best friend. This is These are things, like, all right, things that go on, like, almost, like, telling you things that could happen in the future, and, and they come true, and you're like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, it taps into something that is unexplainable? What does that mean? You know, and, and to the normal people, it sounds totally batshit. But, yeah, that thing, man, this but, fool's lost their mind. Go get a job. Yo, yo right. Go get and, a and that's job. okay, man. It's not for everybody. But for those who dare to be different and try it, they're going to see some shit, bro. They're going to tap into something that they didn't even know existed. They're going to they're gonna travel to where they didn't even know was real and, and see beings or see loved ones that have passed away consoling you, telling you that I'm okay. That alone is, is bringing people to, towards us. Okay, people are coming to us because they lost a, a, a son, a, a, a father, a mother, and they want to, you know, feel their their spirit again, and their and their their tap into their soul again, you know. And they, this happens, bro. This is amazing. This can this spiritual connection is that strong, and uh, it's okay to sound fucking nuts, bro. It's awesome to sound crazy because people are enticed by fucking crazy. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really you looking forward. You want to wanna know why I was so pulled in by fucking Joe Rogan? Because he sounded fucking nuts, bro. And I was like, yo, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fucking big shout out to Joe Rogan yeah, to talking me into, into the DMT. The you know what I mean? I'm really looking okay. forward to this. Um, я хотел сказать на русском языке. Uh, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this. You will tune in tomorrow once it's all said and done. And I will tell you what I feel, how I feel, what I saw, what I didn't see. I mean, I'm going to lay it all out, you know. And I'm an artistic person. I'm actually doing this also to induce my art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's and important. And um, as I said, all this, you know, when I hear like Kanye doing DMT, you know, and, you know, that um, 
Dorian Yates, you know, and all these other people, it makes you question things, you know, and the way the government is banning this stuff, you know, obviously there is something behind it. And watching the, again, Joe Rogan podcast with Ali Jones, they're saying that they're using DMT to speak to the different entities or to, to speak right. to the aliens, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. It's when you realm, think about man. it, like it means like, man, this is a fucking movie. What are you talking yeah. about? It makes no sense. But yeah. Area 51 and the existence of that Area 51 tells you one thing that there is stuff they don't want you to know about. Right. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? There is stuff that they're yeah. putting a tap on. My brother in law came out of the experience, and I'm walking through this thing, and he's laughing and smiling and saying, I feel like we have a secret that no one's supposed to know about. I'm like, dude, it's like that, bro. You're seeing things that. Or like explain to people they look at you sideways like lose his mind and, and I'm like ah fuck it I don't care you know think what you want that's okay I'm cool with me bro I got my God up here I'm good with me inside and guess what it don't matter who you dance with in life me and the girls you're with you know yeah. the guys you're with whatever you know in that aspect or it don't matter man it's you and and the spirit above man and once you have that connection you're good you're good with yourself I'm ready to rock and roll yeah. Uh, look, came a long way from that hand me down. I am not here for the run around. I am not here for the rig of my road. Forget blowing up. I just talked to my mom and I was trying to explain her what I just experienced on DMT. And I can't explain it with words. You're just gone. And there is no existence. There is no flash or bounce. There is no body. There's nothing. Maybe I can explain it with the word space filled with light and geometrical figures, but you can't explain them with words. There is no sight. There is no, there is no flash. It's a very intense and dynamic experience that you really have to get used to. I just did it twice, 30 minutes apart. And in the first trip, I was just asking this question, and, and my operator heard me. Friend, show me where my soul goes when I die. What happens to me when I die? This question bothered me since I was a kid. I always ask that question, maybe because I'm afraid to die, or maybe just to disappear. And that's why I, I really believed in God and went to the monastery. I really just wanted to find out the meaning of myself and know who I am. And when you get on DMT, all these questions about who I am and where I'm going, they have absolutely no meaning. Because there is nothing human about that experience. There is nothing that you can explain with words. And maybe we are just an endless experience in this human life and that we come to this to this dimension and we can experience this materialistic world. Maybe this is just one of our experiences. Maybe one of the worlds that we are just going through. Everything that you see is so intense. And when you come back to this world, your ego is crashed. And you want to treat other people with respect, with openness, and with love. Yeah. Uh, look, came a long way from that hand me down. I am not here for the run around. I am not here for the rig of my road. Forget blowing up, me as a blow. Track bang, have fun with. Going dumb like a blunt chick. Thank God.